Hi guys, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining for today's session. And today we're gonna to be talking about an introduction to securitization market. And the objective of today's session is to not uh, take you into details about securitization, but to give you an overview and to integrate your excitement about this market so that you go and read a lot of stuff on internet available. And with this agenda, I'll be starting out this with this topic and at the end, of the session i'll be opening up uh, for queries in case you have and uh, we can take that forward also okay so with this uh, we'll start out with the session introduction to securitization the first and basic question that anybody could ask is what exactly is securitization okay so securitization and so that's that's going to be one uh, first part of our agenda what is securitization and we're going to be then talking about what is the securitization process so i'll show you the entire graph or things how things actually move when the securitization process is done and this this uh, process is basically a quick snapshot of things happening there can be some deviation that is happening in real life but idea is to give you a basic roadmap then we are going to be talking about motivations for participation so for example if a if a real estate uh, securitization is happening then why a bank is entering into the securitization why a government entity is in, entering into a securitization why an investor or why a home buyer is actually entering into that securitization. So we'll talk about the motivations of the participation. And then also we'll talk about a small case uh, which has happened in 2007-2008 and what all frictions the uh, market saw in that case, okay? In that case and what, what all problems that, that were there in that, uh, in that case. So we'll also look into that friction piece. And finally, we'll open up for queries, okay? So with this uh, agenda of a roadmap, we're going to be starting out with the session. The first part is what exactly is securitization? Okay. So securitization is basically a kind of re-engineering program, a kind of uh, financial engineering concept, wherein what we are doing is, suppose we have an asset, which is basically providing some income, for example, a home mortgage. So if I have taken a home mortgage or a home loan, I'll be paying EMI on that home loan. Okay, so that for a bank or for an institute that becomes an asset because it's an income generating asset. Similarly, a student loan. So in US or in India also, a lot of students take loans, education loans for their for completing of their graduation, post graduation. So whenever they are taking loans and they are paying back their uh, loans, so they pay EMI that becomes a income that will come uh, for that asset. Okay. Then you also see commercial loans, a lot of uh, big uh, companies or small SMEs also taking commercial loans for the growth of their organization. So that also comes into that asset. Then bonds or loans also are considered a part of an asset which is going to continuously give income. Then uh, auto loans are also a part of it. So basically uh, the asset that we have mentioned on this slide is primarily an asset which will give you a quick income, okay? This, this uh, securitization is not only restricted to these assets, there can be other assets also. For example, if suppose I'm an aircraft company and I want to buy Boeing aircraft, I do not have that much amount of funds, so I will buy that aircraft on lease. So lease, uh, uh, with respect to that lease, the aircraft company or the airline company will pay on a monthly or yearly annual income to that aircraft organization. So with that way, that aircraft loans also will become an asset. So the basic understanding is that any asset that is going to give income can be securitized into a new interest paying structure. So for example, if I take home mortgages, what I can do is I can pull out all the home mortgages that I have and create a one more instrument above those pool of asset, that pool of home mortgages, and that instrument can be sold to investor. Okay. And that is what we saw in securitization called as mortgage backed security. So if you're opening up an asset on the pool of asset, that becomes an asset backed security because that asset backed security is get, getting an income from the pool of asset behind it. Okay. But if suppose in that asset, I mix up only home loans. So that becomes a mortgage backed security. Okay. To be very specific, I would say it as, as residential mortgage back security. If suppose that mortgage was for some commercial property and I created a pool of that commercial property and on that pool, I created an instrument. That instrument can be named as commercial mortgage back security, CMBS. Okay. Similarly, I can take student loan. 
I can create a pool of that student loan and I can create a security right above that student loan group also. Right. So securitization in a very simple language, you're taking some interest bearing or income bearing asset. You're combining that asset and creating a new asset above it. That is securitization concept. OK, now how exactly a securitization process works? We'll take an example of home loan. Why am I taking this example? Because the real estate subprime crisis that we saw in 2000, 2007, 8 was related to it. OK, so we're going to be talking about a securitization process, taking an example of a residential loan. OK, so suppose you are a home buyer okay, and you wish to take a loan from an institute which is basically uh, which in this case we will be calling it as an originator so if you're going to take an example from india then an originator could be hdfc limited which is basically specializing in giving home loans to indians for example a dhfl divan housing finance limited company okay so what will happen the transaction that will happen between a homeowner and and the originator will be like this okay so Homeowner will take a mortgage or a loan from the originator and home or originator will pass on the ink or the amount of loan that is sanctioned for that home. Okay. Now, in a very simple plain vanilla case, this transaction should stop over here. If suppose that originator is stopping over here, then we term this transaction as originate to hold. That means whatever the asset or the mortgage that that originator had created that will remain in his book or in his balance sheet as that asset okay this is a normal process and hence we took hence we have named it as originate to hold okay but if suppose the originator enters into a securitization process okay then what happens so an originator who is giving home loans to lot of companies what will what will that originator do it will pull out all the uh, origination loan into into a combined pool it can have thousand mortgage backed securities or thousand home loans across the across india or across us okay the reason we pool it basically so that the diversification effect comes into place we'll see to it how diversification is impacting this entire transaction okay so an originator will take all the loans that he might have he'll create a pool and he will go to a government sponsored entity okay now what is a government sponsored entity so especially in US, you will find Freddie Mac, Freddie Mac as a government sponsored entity who are responsible for providing insurance to the securitization process. Okay. Now when they are doing it, they are actually taking the credit risk from this entire transaction. Okay. Okay. So now originator will pass on that pool to government sponsored entity and government sponsored entity will give back a mortgage backed security, an instrument. Okay which has that pool below it okay now originator will take that pool or oh, sorry we take that mds instrument and will pass that instrument through rating okay so it will go to a fitch rating or a moody rating agency and will ask that rating agency to rate that mbs because it has also has the insurance on it and why is it rating because originator want to pass that mbs to a third party which is basically a dealer or an arranger okay generally this is a big investment bank sitting in wall street want to enter into the securitization process and make some fees out of this okay so originator will what 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 will originator do is originator will take that mbs will pass that mbs basically will sell that mbs okay to that dealer or arranger okay a lot of the time what happened is that the originator is also a investment bank and the arranger is a subsidiary or a remote bankruptcy remote entity or subsidiary of that investment bank itself okay so for example if suppose you have hsbc sitting over here as an originator and they created one more entity which is hsbc india opportunity company and that company is actually an arranger which is helping hsbc in this transaction okay so now originator what will originator do is originator will sell that mbs to the dealer or arranger and in return will receive a cash flow that means dollar amount or the value of that mbs to back to the originator okay i'm taking a pause over here and i would like to tell you small update on this part what so uh, originator whenever he was buying or uh, that whenever he was issuing loan he might have taken a loan from a warehouse lender or a, some bigger organization 
so whenever an originator receives back money from the arranger he can pay back that loan and he can remove that asset from his balance sheet okay so now once the mbs is with the dealer or arranger what will he do he will create a structure okay now this structure can have a entire one slab or it can have different tranches okay so it, it can have a senior tranche it can have a mezzanine tranche it can have a equity tranche okay now why are we creating tranches in this entire structure so that i can sell easily to the investor or investors representative who is basically an asset manager okay i'd like to take a pause over here now when i am referring to investor okay i am basically referring to somebody who has a cash okay or who wants to invest money in market either he is investing directly in the market or he is investing through an agent that means he is investing through a mutual fund or he is investing through a pension fund to investing through a hedge fund okay so that asset manager becomes an agent of that investor so over here i am referring to both of them together okay now dealer what will that dealer do will dealer will sell that mbs to the investor okay and investor will pay back that amount to the dealer okay and through which it will again the amount will pass on to the originator that is how the flow of cash flow happens okay the important part to understand over here is that each investor might have a different risk appetite so an, a dealer or arranger he will structure the deal in such a way that he can create tranches for each different type of risk category investors okay he might create a special category or tranche of uh, uh, this mbs which is specifically uh, given to those investors who do not want to take much risk that is called a senior tranche which is more secure or somebody who wants to take more risk will be given a lower amount of tranche that is an equity tranche okay now how how will basically this asset manager or investor will make money okay so whenever a home buyer or home owner is actually going to pay back okay the uh, emis or the principal or interest amount that principal or interest amount will pass on to the servicer now who is the servicer servicer is primarily appointed by a dealer or an arranger okay to collect the fees or the emis from the home owner okay and servicer also do lot of other back end activities for example doing accounting for the amount that he has received if suppose home owner is not paying that amount so going to his home asking for collections that activity reconciliation of the activity doing a giving a report to home owner about the payment that he has done giving a report to the dealer about the amount that he has received okay so all the back end activity in that this and in, 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 in the entire transaction is actually done by the service all the back office related activity okay so whenever a home owner 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 is paying the emi he is actually passing that amount to the servicer and servicer is actually passing that amount to the government sponsored entity and through that it is actually passing out to the monthly payment to the asset manager through that mbs so if i am an asset manager and i am holding an mbs i will get monthly emis and it could include both a principal or interest both include okay so this is the entire process through which to which a residential loan can be securitized okay it starts from the home owner and practically ends from the asset manager okay now i'll i'll move on to the uh, motivations and then to the risk of this entire process okay now first the motivation so let's talk about home owner okay so whenever an home owner is actually buying an asset okay so ideally his profile is checked and based on this profile he will be, he will be eligible for a loan so in india like we act civil score us in us you will find fico score which is basically used to assign a rating or a score to that individual and based on that score a loan will be issued now before this entire securitization actually picked up before 2000 year 2000 the home owners were finding it difficult to buy loans because of their credit score because of their fico score now when the securitization process actually kicked up was actually taken very seriously in the market so it become very evident that originator 
or the somebody who is actually in the middle of this transaction the originator can make a fees only by issuing loan to the homeowner and can by passing the home uh, home loans as a package to the dealer so originator was incentivized to give more loans okay and in this way the homeowners who are finding it difficult to look, get loans started getting loans and that too at a better rate so that was a very good motivation for the homeowners to enter into this entire securitization process because it helped them to raise money for their homes and also it helped them to reduce their interest cost now why would an originator enter into this entire transaction because he realized that by creating a pool of home loans and passing it on to the dealer or arranger that risk does not stay with him on his balance sheet because right now once we enter into the securitization we have moved from originator to hold to originator to distribute okay that means an originator whenever he is opening up a home loan he is not opening up with an intention to hold that asset in his balance sheet he is actually opening up with an intention to pass it on to the dealer okay so and throughout this process he will make a fees for this entire transaction so the motivation for originator was to earn that fees okay now why would a government entered a sponsored entity will enter into this transaction so actually you would realize that a government sponsored entity is giving an insurance on this on this mortgage pool if suppose tomorrow the homeowners default on that loan okay so the government sponsored entity's responsibility is to provide that monthly payment to the asset manager okay now government sponsored entity will not do this for free so actually when they are giving an insurance when they are covering the credit risk of this entire mortgage pool they are asking for a fee for an insurance premium and also they have a very tight regulation that means they will do a detailed due diligence of that pool for example the average fico score of that pool should not be less than 660 or is the maturity average maturity of that pool should not be less than 20 years so they might have certain guidelines if that guidelines is followed then only they will give insurance okay so the interest of the government sponsored entity was to earn premium and also to facilitate this entire securitization process because as government sponsored entity give insurance it becomes very easy for the originator to sell that mbs to the dealer or arranger okay now coming to the fitch rating the next participant in this securitization process the credit rating agency now previously credit rating agencies were only rating bonds and they were earning a sufficient amount of money but when the securitization process actually kicked off they started realizing we can enter into this market and start providing our services and start making money but the rating agencies did not realize the actual risk in this product and they were rating it similar to a bond and because of which they indirectly were passing on incorrect information to the other participants because on the basis of this rating the dealer or arranger was actually buying that security from the originator or on the basis of this rating the asset manager or the investor was actually making sure whether they are buying that mbs is of the good quality or not okay so fitch rating or an insurance uh, or a rate credit rating agency motivation was to earn that fees because of this uh, mbs process or this securitization process okay now a servicer is entering into this process because he is providing a backing service to the entire structure and he is making a fee to this process okay and one more important point that we need to realize that servicer is actually paid only till the time the house is foreclosed that means if the home owner says i do not have money to pay then the servicer's activity will stop okay his only responsibility would be to find a buyer for that home okay so servicer is basically making money till the time the house is operating or basically house is actually running and it is not been foreclosed okay now the next participant is basically a dealer or an arranger okay like i said previously a dealer or an arranger can be a sub company or a sub entity of that originator also now dealer and arranger is actually doing that transaction basically buying from the originator 
and selling it out to the investor and making a small cut in this entire process so he is also earning a small fee okay and the asset manager is actually buying this the next participant asset manager is actually buying this product because he wish to give his investor a good return on the product okay so if i am an investor and i have invested into mutual fund then i would expect a mutual fund to grow at 10 or 11 12% okay so an asset manager who is managing that mutual fund is incentivized for for him to perform he need some asset which can give higher returns so he was incentivized to go and buy mbs so that he can give in high interest or high returns to his investor okay so these were the motivations of all the participants in this entire transaction now what all problems actually occurred okay so now do you realize that government sponsored entity has taken a credit risk so whenever a home buyer actually defaults okay it it comes down as a part of the pool so now the house is available for sale and till that time the house is not sold there is no income that is coming and once the house is sold the investor will receive the entire amount whatever amount that that uh, house has been sold for okay now the government sponsored entity actually pay given had given an insurance to the entire mortgage pool okay now come to this, uh, this realization that when the loans were given by the originator and they were incentivized to give more loans because they wanted to pass it on to the dealer what they started doing is they started reducing their underlying standard that means when first they were giving loans to only prime customers they started giving loans to sub prime customers that means somebody who might not have a stable income not have a stable asset or not have a stable cash flow or some other income okay or not have a job also so they started giving loans to those sub prime categories and because of which what happened over a period of time the entire pool that was created was started getting off only sub prime loans that means of investors or of homeowners who do not have the ability to pay back in emis okay so and also there is a small point whenever the originator was giving the loan to sub prime they were issuing loan at an adjustable rate mortgage case that means initial for the initial years the home loan interest will be very low okay but as the year pass on the teaser rates end the interest or emi will shoot that means whenever an originator was giving out loan to the sub prime borrowers he was issuing a loan for example at 3% for 5 years and once that 5 year goes down that emi of 3% will shoot to again 10% okay so what happened is that lot of these teaser rates started ending in 2006 2007 and lot of people started defaulting okay now when this entire process was structurized the entire assumption was that if the home owner defaults we will sell his house because housing price is going up and we will recover the amount but when lot of people started defaulting there was a huge push or supply of homes in the market which started having impact on the price and the home prices started going below or started dropping and because of which what happened is that whenever somebody was defaulting and we were taking his low home to to be sold out in the market we were not getting the appropriate recovery value and because of which lot of government sponsored entities started getting hit and they were started making losses okay and because of this loss the they were not able to pass on the money to the investor or the asset manager okay so and i am assuming that you guys have gone through the entire uh, entire structure and we are going to be talking about next step okay that is going to be about the process is contained completed now we are going to talk about a simple case study that happened in 2007 2008 and i will try to relate it to the previous process that we just covered okay so you will find goldman sachs okay as the main company okay now over here it has been mentioned as arranger generally it can be an originator also but in this case it was an arranger because what goldman sachs actually did is there was a new century financial institute institute which was basically an originator which was giving home loans to people they bought the entire pool from that entity or new century financial 
and they create they were actually the arranger and they created one more entity a bankruptcy remote entity that was actually goldman sachs america mp trust okay so they created one more entity which is which was actually a subsidiary of goldman sachs okay that was a bankruptcy remote entity and this entity was used to issue mbs or sell mbs to the investor okay so now this was the entire structure that happened in that case and who are the other players in this process there were there was a credit rating agency so moody and snp were a, were actually involved in this in the rating uh, rating activity of this uh, case then there was a servicer oquin so you might be you might have heard this uh, organization so what they were doing is they were actually a servicer who was giving taking out emis from the customer uh making sure that the customer is paying the money the all the background activities entries reconciliation was managed by oquin but he was not the main servicer in this transaction wells fargo was the master servicer so you have to understand that this is not the single securitization that is happening in the market so goldman sachs might be involved in hundreds of securitization so for all the securitization he might have gone and done a agreement with wells fargo to be a master servicer for all the securitization activity okay and for each further activities he will arrange the master securitize servicer will actually arrange a servicer who will take care of that particular securitization okay so basically the first money will go to the master servicer and through that it will reach to the servicer and through that it will reach to the government sponsored entity and through that it will reach to the investor okay and finally there was a, a deutsche bank also involved as a trustee so we have not talked about all the different participants in the in the entire uh, process because you also have an, a pool manager you also have a due diligence or valuation agent so we have not talked about it so there there was a trust also involved in this uh, in this entire case where the trust was liable to take care of the entire trust and if there is any manipulation or there is any problem or he is going to talk on behalf of the investor okay so this was this case study of goldman sachs that happened in 2007 2006 now we're going to be talking about the friction or the problem that actually we saw in this entire process okay so i'll just quickly walk you through the homeowner then the originator new uh, city bank then you will also find an arranger which is over here the rating agency an asset manager and the investor and the servicer okay now the first friction that happened was basically between an originator and the homeowner okay now what happened in this case was the city if suppose an homeowner and the originator who was giving out a loan to the homeowner the problem between them is there can be a predatory lending with the homeowner that means even if the homeowner is not eligible for a particular kind of loan he might be given by basically relaxing the underwriting standards okay or he might be given a loan which is not suitable for that customer okay that is predatory lending okay and also the home owner might not be sophisticated in financial products so there can be a conflict of interest between the originator and the home owner so originator is actually giving a loan to the home owner which is not suitable to that home owner or there might be high penalties or high interest to that home owner okay that is the first friction that we can see between the originator and the home owner the second friction is primarily between the originator and the arranger so whenever an arranger is actually buying the entire mbs from that originator or that pool from that originator so in this process the, the originator has more knowledge about the pool because he was the first person to actually sell that so there can be a scenario because of this information asymmetry because the originator has more information that and he might be selling off all the incorrect or bad loans to the arranger so that is information asymmetry problem or a friction or a potential issue in this step okay the third step is basically or third friction that we see is primarily about arranger and the credit rating okay now whenever an arranger is going is about to sell that entity to the investor through his subsidiary that uh, investor uh, will be that investor will ask for a rating so he will go to a fitch rating and will ask for a fitch rating but fitch rating basically models only bonds okay and when fitch rating is giving a rating to that mbs product okay 
there might be a conflict of interest because the fees is coming from the arranger to the Fitch rating. So there might be an incentive for Fitch to play a, a play a very uh, sheepish and might give away higher or better rating for that product. So any any credit rating might might fall for it because of the conflict of interest. Okay, that is the third conflict or issue that we saw in this entire product transaction. Then fourth conflict was between an asset manager and an investor. That is primarily your principal and agent problem. So an investor was somebody who was giving, who was paying, uh, investing money in the fund through SIP or through some other means. Now, when he was giving the money to the asset manager, he was expecting that asset manager will take good decisions and will invest in only those assets which are which will give good returns to the investor. But if there is a conflict of interest, that means if asset managers start investing in those assets which are risky because he wants to give high returns to the investor and actually increasing the risk of the fund, then there can be a conflict of interest between the investor and the asset manager. Okay. Or if there is a if there is a there is a uh, syndicate, there is a syndicate between the arranger or the asset manager. Then asset manager will by default buy all the uh, MBAs that has been issued by the arranger. So that can lead to a conflict of interest. That was the fourth friction that we saw. I am seeing a lot of people having queries, so we will we'll, we'll be opening up for that query in some time. Uh, next part is your conflict of interest between your investor and your rating agency. So now investor, whenever he was issuing money to the asset manager or whenever he was investing directly into the arranger's MBS, okay. So that investor was actually looking at that credit rating, but that credit rating might be wrong because there is a conflict of interest between the arranger and pitch rating or the rating agency. Now, because of this issue, investor is not getting a true picture of that of the riskiness of that product. And because of which he might end up buying a risky product, which might not suit his profile. And this conflict is also with the asset manager. So whenever an asset manager is buying a product, he is looking at the rating. And if that rating is not proper, then he might end up buying a incorrect, a correct product product. Friction six is basically between your investor and a servicer. Okay. Suppose if I am an investor in this entire process and I am the actual owner of that pool finally, and if that's, if that investor uh, is uh, relying on that home loans to actually pay back money. And if suppose that home loan homeowner says I'm a I'm bankrupt, I cannot pay back the money. Then the servicer's responsibility is to sell that asset in the market and get the money. But servicer might delay, might delay the entire process of selling that home because he is earning an income till the time is that home is not out of that pool or that home is not sold someone else. So he is actually earning money till the time the home is not foreclosed. So he might not, even if the uh, homeowner is bankrupt, that servicer might not pass on that information to the government sponsored entity and through him, it, that information might not pass to the investor. Okay. So that is a conflict of interest that we can see between your servicer and an investor. There are many more conflict of interest, but I have touched upon only six 